that also helped me complete my first project about criminal ten Four, three, two, one. Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. Uh, the program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Today uh, we are talking about the, uh, again, of course, a lot of symbols. And uh, I mean, I'm going to continue uh, what I left last week. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about the pictorial nature of a lot of writings and also symbols. I am using uh, Greek uh, writing five as an, an example to show you uh, they were actually a kind of a pictograph and then uh, I will talk uh, about you know how the ancients you know from the very very direct understanding of creation as simply birth itself and then we human society get more sophisticated and we begin to believe that creation you know can happen when God you know just speak you can actually see them you know all the remnants are uh, in all the pictograph at the early stage and then slowly things turn uh, into what we understand today and of course you know I prepared you know almost 16 uh, slides I don't know if I have time to finish it but I will try First of all, uh, have patience with me, and then you have to understand things, you know, in as a child, very naively, okay? And uh, once again, uh, the sound base that I use is Cantonese, uh, Chinese, and uh, not Mandarin Chinese, because uh, Cantonese Chinese is a, a very ancient Southern dialect, and actually a lot of the ancient Chinese dialect has uh, carried very, very old sound. And I insist that we share a common core, like the basket style, fish and um, I will begin the slideshow to show you what a basket fish starfish looks like okay here is the um, let me see okay okay here is the basket starfish and this is uh, what I believe our language core is you know everything is just coming from one organism every single uh, culture just is a branch you know we are not separate family trees and then uh, because if we believe that like what uh, we are taught now uh, in the from the academic world uh, that will only usher in human hierarchy and uh, because we have all this priority who comes first who comes later but uh, my model you will see that you know the core is all shared by every single one we just in in, uh, different developmental stages and we just branch out in different direction in our unique way okay so I think only by uh, explaining things understanding language that way then uh, we can achieve a more uh, equal society and this kind of uh, tree family business needs uh, to be changed okay and uh, this is a research that I have been doing for uh, more than 20 years so um, I present to you an Asian uh, female point of view so you will find that uh, a lot of my point of view might be a little bit different from the academic point of view okay first of all as I said I will use a, a Greek symbol to show you actually they are carrying a lot of visual symbol to show you a very definite and um, concepts and um, first of all um, as I uh, kept saying that a lot of the word actually are uh, interesting enough all carry polar meaning including symbols itself you know when you look at the phi uh, you can actually see that a circle is being cut in the middle and the other one uh, what we call the, the the small letter is actually a curving shape why are they like that because these two concepts has been uh, uh, involved you know with the invention of this symbol since a long long time ago it has incorporated into human language along with the symbol so uh, you cannot look at it in a one single unique way they can actually uh, understood in various ways and first and you have to be really flexible and then also again if you scribble with your hands it helps your brain to understand you know when you draw a circle you cut it open or you you turn around with it it actually helps you to understand rather than the modern method of typing in the computer okay this is one of our modern problem of understanding okay first of all you can understand the file as a split act and then you can understand um, the other way of writing it as a turning uh, concept okay 
And interesting enough, there is a Chinese word. And we actually, this is fi, okay? We have the word sound fun. Fun is actually showing something breaking up and we understand the middle like an F, actually it's a, like an F sign, okay? And uh, we understood it as a knife, you know, uh, the cutting through it. And for us is to divide, to separate, exactly the same meaning as this Greek alphabet, okay? And then uh, we also have a Chinese uh, ancient uh, pictograph uh, you can see that it's like two person turning around and as time went by these two person actually turned into two F form again it is like a F form in English okay and then we also have the sound far this is phi and this is far far actually also means a variety of turning uh, motion and concepts first of all uh, it's, it's simply the turning motion and the other one is to change into something in a metaphysical way okay so I will show you more and that um, uh, writing but at the very beginning they use a lot of the visual sign okay this is a Greek word strophe uh, when I transcribe it into English you can still see this fur part okay and this turning part this is actually to describe turns when you're making ropes or things like that you will see that when you trail thread you do have to have this action involved and also of course metamorphosis when you change from one thing to another thing and exactly this in Chinese will be will be will be saying far in this way and um, is as uh, a one uh, animal form is uh, uh, evolved into another way so we also use the sound far and we also have that turning concept in our head and then of course you know this if you write it this way fisi is the uh, Greek word for, word for nature of course they understand that nature by itself is going in cycles like the seasons changes all the flowers they comes and go and comes around every time after this uh, the same year uh, I mean after a year so they understand all this like a cycle itself including human life of course okay so on this side we also have the same kind of concept you this word is called uh, fractus 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 is actually a fence something to divide you from another one okay you will see that the sound is very similar to fence as well fractus and also the action when you write it you have to cut through this circle itself and also the other very um, interesting word I have to show you, you is the word Pharisees Pharisees if you un look into the history itself um, it actually used as uh, to mean the people who separate from the main group that's why uh, you have the English word separate you see this per and the fur actually is also you know a change you will see that later because the Pharisees um, is a Greek word but then uh, the sappers actually is a Latin word and that also means fence and then uh, that gets your word separate okay so everything has its uh, own um, link and then all the links are actually not just linear they actually link to every single direction like that basket starfish okay so but the, the point that I want to get across is that you can understand it as a turn you can understand it as a cut as a cut as a division and then you can also see it even if you agree you can also see it you know through the first acronym so this is the very important acronym came in okay since ancient time and also the other word for it is fei Fi is actually uh, to escape when you live from one place to another. Interestingly, in a very uh, vulgar street way of talking in Cantonese, we will say pit. Pit actually uh, is this stroke right there. When we say pit, we actually have a concept like this pit, okay? A curve like this, and we understand that we are leaving quickly from one place to another. So this fi and the pit is also, you know, um, they joined in a very, very ancient time. And then, of course, you know, in Latin, you have this findo, which exactly what the Chinese fun also means to separate, to finish. That's how you get the finish, uh, the English word finish. When you get to the end, you know, you something get cut and you stop right there. And then, of course, you know, in Latin, you have another word, frago, it means to break up something. So you will see this is fur and bur and per. They are all the uh, sound shifting. And every single language actually holds the 
the same way of shifting sound okay so um of, of also in latin uh following this vc they also change from v they change to v and also it has exactly the same meaning meaning nature and as i said again you know they understand it you know it is a, a cycles you know nature goes in cycles and of course you know and also when you do this you know it has to do with the thread in latin it will be philo a thread but then you know um the the concept extended to your descendant like a like the thread you know Philly is actually the Sun so as I said you know the water and the thread were also used by the ancient people as a concept sharing for to mean fertility as your descendant okay so you have all these different concepts jammed together but you can actually find them out in uh, from different remnants in different languages okay so um, now I will show you a little bit of a few uh, English words so you can also hear the sound fur okay either than the separators you will have the word fence you will have the word differ this part is uh, actually from that core and then also the finish and also even the word far when you cut out something when you separate you know from someone then you are far away from that object so all this actually has a multiple uh, subtle meaning chain changes but you will see that the, the sound actually is very very consistent okay I will go to the next slide I will just give you a real fence you know a head as um, an example I have shown you a few weeks ago this is a Chinese word white writing fan okay fan actually means fans and we have drawn out the tree and this is a, also a hashtag right there to mean the, the block or something so you block something is fun and and this is also for us it means the border town or something like that so it is the fence and then uh, in in Greek it will be the fractus they used you know that concept to help themselves as the cutting and as you can see the fence actually cut through a property to divide two properties okay and then uh, of course you have fractus the modern word and also fraction and then um, I will show you another Chinese writing this is some really we have the word but but actually means the word eight which in Chinese means uh, infinity and and uh, you all know that Chinese love the number eight right this is actually from this ancient concept of breaking things up infinitively so uh, but it's actually carried the sound um, of break okay it means to break to split endlessly and then um, of course you know then you have the Hebrew word Baka you will see that but Baka and break these are all in the same system because Baka also means to break or to split you know they mean exactly the same since ancient time and then uh, when sound shift and we add another knife like F form uh, in the middle we means uh, we actually uh, specifically means to divide something which carries the sound fun and then of course you have the fans there right and then uh, you have the Latin sepes and then uh, that uh, the the origin of your word separation and this means fence and also in Greek uh, I mean in Latin you have also frango frango is actually a link to fracking and also fraction so you will see that this uh, mutation are very very uh, consistent and also uh, you can also look at the Arabic side the Arabic has this frac and this actually means to part and to separate so you see even the English word you know you will see first purple consistently appearing in these breaking words okay so uh, according to the linguists all these should be in different uh, language family the Hebrew the Chinese the Greek the Arabic and the Latin but they are all sharing this sound and I can actually go into more to show you but um, I know that and I understand that the more I bring in sometimes I actually ended up confusing you more but I will um, uh, ask you to actually look at more in reality and also in the pictograph to hear the sound okay so um, as I said you know you look at this the grid use this to help themselves to mean the fence which to cut through and the Chinese use this to help them their eyes to means uh, to break and to split and then also um, and finally you know as uh, meaning gets more complicated we add more and more stuff into it that's how writing gets more complicated okay so Thank you.
um, in order to uh, explain that word, you know, Parker in, in Hebrew actually still exists in a very, very important place in Lebanon, uh, what you call the Baca Valley right here. And uh, the Baca, you can spell it in different way in English, but uh, it actually came from the uh, Hebrew and also Arabic, Arabic root, you know, and then it's all Baca. Why is it? Because it is really a geographic fault line that cuts through the country. This is where, you know, there is a deep fault right there. Of course, when there's a valley, when water starts to flow through it, it becomes a very fertile uh, valley and a lot of civilization, of course, forest right there. So um, you can see that, you know, a lot of the things still exist now. They are not ancient. They never uh, become extinct, okay? So again, I will show you this part, which means to break and to split. We, if we are not using it as a number, okay? It actually means to break and to split. Split, and then you have Parker in um, Greek, I mean in Hebrew, uh, to mean exactly the same thing to break and to split, and then the Chinese fun, and then also you have a, a Hebrew word. I show you this phalak, and then sometimes you can uh, it, when it transcribed into uh, Greek, it will say phalak. Phalak is actually a biblical figure, and because uh, why is it uh, important? Because in Bible it says that when he uh, the time of Pelek or Felek for in his day was the earth divided so you understand that since ancient time you know all this no matter you are Hebrew or you are Arab or you are Chinese we are both using similar sound to express similar meaning okay you can look into the Bible yourself and and and, and find it out for yourself okay and then as I said, I keep insisting that you have to be naive. Um, you, we are actually too educated to see all this visual symbol, which is very clear uh, uh, in all this pictograph and also in the early uh, pictorial form. Even in Greek, it's very, very pictorial in my eyes, okay? And also try to use your ears. Sometimes the spelling is not really what how it is pronounced. So you have to also use your ears. And because slowly I will go, you, uh, I will bring you uh, to go into the mind of the ancients. You have to understand it as the ancients, okay? So um, uh, again, I used uh, the, one of the concepts to show you how concepts slowly mutated. I used this very, very important Sumerian uh, symbol, the mare, and, and this actually means, you know, uh, the uh, very, very interesting uh, things, unexplainable things that bring things into existence. So I will show you how it actually becomes, you know, the matriarchal birth creation understanding and to finally become the patriarchal, uh, the word creation, okay? First of all, you will see that you can understand in a very neutral way the mare, you can understand it as something flowing down. It can be a, a, a water, it can be a descendant, it can be a lot of things, but we know that we come a, a mare, okay? And then and there's a Chinese symbol. You, uh, surely we understand it as childbirth. We have the song of uh, Min, okay? And then we have other symbol. At the same time, you can see clearly that we draw a T inside. Uh, this uh, big T and water fluid is coming out. I, um, uh, from it, it actually comes the meaning of the fountain, uh, human as fountain, okay? And also the thread that has to do a lot with the birth uh, relation so I cannot tell you precisely whether it's female or, or male and sometimes I think at times they were used by both uh, gender okay but then slowly it actually changed to this uh, patriarchal word creation uh, started from the Bible okay and then you will see that this T shape other than this very concrete shape it begin to come to this very uh, neutral form again but then we have tons of them in Chinese and then um, this strict form actually gets more and more curl and it's like in a world and slowly it become um, a possible to understand it as air okay from this strict form it slowly curl into air so you will see that the, our human concept also change along with it of course this three stroke also is a very simple way in all the cultures to mean air okay and then the movement of air I should say the Chinese also 
have a bunch of symbols like this. This is separated from this, you know, uh, from that form, we actually evolve into many different forms. But from these various forms, we actually develop into a writing. This is a determinative that we have to do with rituals, to do with uh, ancient um, divine power. We uh, From this symbol, you can see that we also believe that it's kind of like falling down from heaven. No matter whether it is liquid form or whether it is word form, whether it is instruction, whether it is command, it's all jammed together in this. And and this we use it to simply means you know speech so you will see that even in the Chinese symbol it actually involved into very complicated form even to two or three thousand years ago already okay so here you will see that how many fluxes, as I said, the Sumerian, very neutral man right there. You can compare it to the Chinese, you know, ritual form. I like this, the determinative of ritual form. And then also, um, if you follow the psalm, interestingly in the Bible, whenever you see God uh, speak or people speak, they will have a verb called a mer. And, and this is a very important component, the mer part, okay? And then it means speak and also same is to sing and to psalm and even the English word psalm you have the m part right there so you will see that the me me ma at that time it's closely connected with speech sometimes with water okay so uh, you will see that no matter in what form they actually incorporate them um, from ancient time and then uh, a me and in uh, Arabic it actually becomes more um, uh, authoritative or authoritative okay it means command instead of speak it means command you know this is all godly thing okay heaven and then they have also a must move this is all confused by the grammar you can take away all this front part the important part is this move right there it also means sound right there to praise something you know to sing and okay and then Chinese you know we have lost a lot in between other than and this very original form but the sound ma actually um, retained in a very negative way in Chinese actually it means scold or it means curse so uh, when God curse you and when God scolds you and also when God commands you they all come down in this way it all goes back to the original Sumerian form but you will see that there are thousands and thousands years of development right there but you will see that the the mer sound and the mer symbol is very very consistent in all the, the writing form okay so now I will bring you to see uh, the, 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 the word, okay? And as you see, you know, this is the original uh, meaning that they found is the divine property that enable cosmic activities. You will, can understand that it is a soul and that's how, you know, uh, the A form become active too, okay? Sometimes, you know, you will see that God blows some air into Adam's uh, nose, it become a living being, okay? So we do not understand how the early people understand it but we do know that there is something that comes out as air okay and then um, uh, let me show you the W form okay and uh, when it becomes to become curve okay this is ancient Egyptian hieroglyph this is Chinese uh, we both has W sound, okay? This is W, this is boy or one, okay? And then uh, you can understand it as a wind, and then uh, it goes down. I will so show you this uh, mutation shifting forms, and at the, from the word, you can mutate it into ver. You can understand it as the voice, and then it also mutated into F. You can understand it as the phone. Phone actually uh, in he, in uh, Greek it actually means sound, of course, you know. And then phone actually in Chinese actually means the wind. Oh, actually it goes back to this. And you know that you know a lot of the sound comes from the wind. And in the Bible story, uh, the wind actually kind of like speaking to people. Okay, you have to understand how the ancient understand the world naively. Okay, the V. Uh, shifted into 
be you can understand other than wind you have the breeze that's why all these are related or the breath and then of course B go back to the F uh, okay and then and then V also uh, mutate into P P uh, you can understand it as speak and then P and uh, mutate it into F this is uh, uh, constantly shifting so that's why you have a whole lot of this word like that and I will show you this bunch of Chinese words they are endless okay and the first few of them, I can I can just generally summarize them with the H sound. As I said, I told you that the uh, H normally has very as four different forms in ancient Egyptian and three in Arabic and two in Hebrew and even in Chinese we have at least three different sounds as H. Okay, the lightest one. <sighs> is to express air. So as you can see clearly, uh, we say it how, uh, how, hey, ho, and you can understand it exactly as English how. So air coming out from the mouth, okay? And as I said, you know, it become more and more curved. You know, in Chinese, we write it in a different way. And of course, you understand it's hell, and in Chinese, it's hey, it's air, and hai is also air coming out. You can understand it's exhale in English, okay? And then, of course, this in in in, in Chinese we have uh, carry the wu and the fu sound. Okay, this is definitely air coming out from the uh, mouth. And when it gets more curl, we go back to this pronunciation. We said it's one. Okay, you will see that this is oh for us it means speak. That's why in Tibetan you have this uh, to begin all this uh, this literature that uh, that um, uh, we they start as religious text okay so it seems that is an ancient divine being spoke to them okay and and chinese you will see that one also means a cloud and then one actually means a spirit a soul this is correspond with the ruh in ancient hebrew and as i said you know if you use your hand you keep writing this they are exactly the same form sorry time is running uh, out I think I will stop right there it's indeed a lot of information to get through uh, but uh, I hope you can type the program name in YouTube uh, basket starfish our language core and you will be watch everything again okay thank you